Hi, I'm Dr. Samantha Halliday. I'm the director of the LLM in Medical Law and Ethics here at Durham University. In this short video, myself and my colleagues are going to introduce you to the module that sits at the very heart of the LLM programme, Contemporary Issues in Medical Law and Ethics. In this module, you can expect research-led teaching. All members of the teaching team are actively researching in the areas that they teach. We're all not simply telling you about the law, we're actually setting the agenda. We're having an impact upon the law as it develops. And we will be sharing our research with you throughout the module. We are all members of Durham Cells, that's the Centre for Ethics and Law in the Life Sciences. By coming to Durham, by taking the LLM in Medical Law and Ethics, you can become a member of CELLS. You can take part in the Research Centre, which really forms a backbone to this LLM. It provides an exciting, an inclusive, a vibrant research community. And you are able to participate in that Research Centre within the community and to take part in all of the really exciting events that take place throughout the year. So the teaching team is made up of Professor Emma Cave, myself, Dr Samantha Halliday and Professor Sean Pattinson. As I said, we're all leading researchers in our fields. We've all published extensively on the topics that we're going to teach within this module. We will be using a flipped classroom approach. What that means is that in the first week on each topic, you will have a lecture that is based online so that you're able to follow it at your own pace to do the associated reading and this is then followed the next week by an in-depth seminar where we will be having detailed discussions of all of the issues that arise in relation to the topic. Our aim then is to cultivate a critical appreciation of the legal and ethical difficulties that are raised by modern medical practice. We will be focusing on particular topics in this module. We will start with an introduction to medical ethics, followed by the topic of consent, obstetric intervention, medical treatment of children, reproductive genetics, and ending with end-of-life non-treatment decisions. We're going to tell you a little bit about each of those topics now and the person who's going to introduce you to the topic is the person who will be teaching that topic as part of the module. Hello, I'm Sean Pattinson. I'm Professor of Medical Law and Ethics at Durham University. So this new module will start with an introduction to ethics. We'll be considering what it means to say that something is ethically right or ethically wrong and we will be considering whether ethics is about values that are objective or relative. And we'll be looking at the leading theories on ethics and crucially how they apply to controversial issues in medical practice. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Cave and I'm a professor of healthcare law. The second substantive topic on the module will focus on consent. When a doctor treats a patient, they need authority to do so, or their touching will constitute a civil and potentially a criminal wrong. We'll look at how the defence of consent operates. We'll focus on three areas, whether the consent is voluntary, whether they have mental capacity, and the information that a patient needs in order to consent. We'll look at what statute has to say, and explore some of the case law, and look at how it's changed over time and the ethical issues that consent entails. Our focus will be on domestic law, but we'll also draw upon international instruments and comparators. Hi, my name's Sam Halliday. I'm an Associate Professor here in Durham Law School. I will be looking at obstetric intervention with you. This follows on really nicely from Emma's section on consent. The general rule is that an adult with capacity must give a valid consent in order for medical treatment to be lawful. However, there has been some suggestion that that may not be the case where a woman is pregnant and the fetus is viable. 
There's a lot of case law on this in the US. There have been a large number of cases in England and Wales, though, as well, over the last few years. Cases where the court has determined that the woman lacks capacity to make her own decisions about how to give birth. Generally, these have been cases involving women with a severe mental illness, normally bipolar or schizophrenia. And the court has determined that she lacked capacity to make her own birth decisions, decisions about how to deliver the child, and that it would be in her best interests to have a caesarean section, despite the fact that she is refusing a caesarean. It's said to be in her best interests because her best interests require the safe delivery of the child. So we will look at the recent case law. We'll look at the way that best interests have been construed. We'll think about whether the fetus has become a second patient rather than a secondary patient. And we'll think about how the rhetoric of choice in birth applies to women who have severe mental illness. The next topic will look at the fascinating issue of the treatment of children. Some children can't consent because they're too young. Others could consent, but the law says that they can't necessarily refuse treatment that's in their best interest. We'll explore the issue, starting with very young children and working our way up to look at adolescents. We'll focus on UK law and the potential for reform, and in doing so, we'll also draw upon international instruments such as the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Another topic on this module will be reproductive genetics. We'll be looking at research on embryos and its potential to deliver future medical treatments. And in particular, we'll be focusing on what's known as human cloning, where we create an embryo that's virtually genetically identical to another human being, so a time-delayed identical twin, if you like. And we'll be looking at what is known as heritable genome editing, where we edit the DNA of embryos to affect the future trace of the child. And in both cases, we'll be looking at the ethical issues they raise and the, the legal issues, focusing on international instruments, UK law and a selection of other jurisdictions. We'll round off the module by looking at end-of-life decision-making. Now, we won't be looking at assisted dying, so we won't be looking at active voluntary euthanasia, where an individual is given a lethal injection at their request in order to kill them. We won't be looking at assisted suicide. Both of those topics are dealt with in comparative medical ethics and the law, a separate module. In this module, we'll be focusing upon non-treatment decisions. So these are decisions to withhold or withdraw life-sustaining treatment, the consequence of which is that the individual will die. There are three possible bases that we'll be considering. On the one hand, you have the possibility that an individual with capacity can refuse treatment any treatment, including life-sustaining treatment. So, for example, we'll look at the cases where individuals have made the choice to refuse ventilation, for example. The ventilator then has to be discontinued because without consent there is no lawful basis for the treatment and the individual will die. We will look at the cases of anticipatory decision making. So this is where an individual with capacity makes a decision, an advanced decision to refuse treatment that will come into effect after they lack capacity. The third possibility is where a decision is made on the basis of the patient's best interests. So where the patient lacks capacity and a decision is made to withdraw or to withhold treatment on the basis that this is in their best interests. We'll look at the way the best interests are construed. We'll think about the relevance of the ethical principles, particularly dignity and autonomy, and how they bear upon the law, what influence they have, how the courts have increasingly become focused upon the role of dignity 
in end of life decision making. So I just wanted to explain where this module sits within the programme. The programme has three core modules. This module, Contemporary Issues in Medical Law and Ethics, is a module that runs across the year. It's a 30 credit module and it is the core module that forms the basis of our programme, the LLM in Medical Law and Ethics. You will also study Applied Research Methods in Law, which is 15 credits, and that will prepare you to write your dissertation. Dissertations can be 60, 75 or 90 credits, depending upon the length of your dissertation. It must relate to an area of medical law and engage with both the law and the ethics. So those are your three core modules. In addition to the three core modules, you will choose a number of optional modules, bringing your total number of credits to 180. The number of optional modules that you choose will depend upon the length of your dissertation, but you will be expected to choose between three and five optional modules. And for me, the optional modules are the really innovative element of the LLM in Medical Law and Ethics at Durham. What you'll see from the list is that there are immense opportunities for interdisciplinary study. So you could choose to do all of your optional modules within the law school. You could look at comparative medical law and ethics, an excellent module, even though I say so myself. I'll be telling you about that one in a separate video. But you could also choose to do all of your optional modules outside the law school. We have a huge range of modules with specialists offering their expertise, research-led teaching from a number of departments within the university, including philosophy, anthropology, sociology, medical humanities, geography. There's a very long list. I've put a link to the full list for you, but you can see there are some really exciting modules that I've highlighted in the box. So that's a brief overview of our module, Contemporary Issues in Medical Law and Ethics, the module that sits at the very heart of our LLM in Medical Law and Ethics. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with me. My email address is samantha.halliday at durham.ac.uk. Follow us on Twitter to see what we're doing. And I really hope to see you in September. Bye-bye.